Gravity is a remarkable thing, one of nature's great mysteries. Nobody knows what it is, but everybody knows what it does. Muddy water left standing cleans itself. Not by magic, but just by gravity. Solids sink to the bottom, leaving clear water on top. A simple matter of separation. Let's look at it this way. The blue globules represent the lightweight component, that is the water. And the grey ones, the heavy component, the solids. Once all the solids have settled to the bottom, separation is complete. The water can then be collected by pouring it carefully over the rim, by decanting it. This simple process of gravity separation is what we technical people call batch settling. It has been used, and still is used, for a great many purposes in industry. Innumerable purposes. Let's examine things carefully for a moment. In gravity separation, there are two major factors. One is time, the other is gravity. The time required to complete this settling process depends in turn upon two factors. Firstly, the settling speed of the particles, Secondly, the distance these particles have to travel before they actually settle. It is by reducing this distance that the separation process can be speeded up. Very simple. Now then, in order to maintain the same volume, it is not enough to make the vessel shallower. We must also make it wider. With a little ingenuity, the system could be arranged for what we call continuous flow. In other words, the mixture is fed into the tank at one end and the lightweight component is discharged at the other. The particles then move in two directions, vertically downwards because of the pull of gravity and horizontally due to the flow of the current. Now then, if properly arranged, a continuous flow system of this type will result in all the solids settling at the bottom and the liquid being discharged over the edge of the rim. But the rate of feed can't be speeded up, because then some of the solids would never reach the bottom. They'd be carried over the rim and discharged along with the liquid instead, which would be defeating our purpose. How can we get round this difficulty? Simple. We can insert a shallow tray in the tank, which has the effect of reducing the settling distance and thus the time required for settling too. We can go a step further. We can insert several trays at short vertical intervals from one another. Result, an efficient method of speeding up the settling, which we call thin strata distribution. It's possible to go even further in the application of gravity. Let's take the common case of trying to separate two immiscible liquids, oil and water, for instance. If the mixture is left in a simple batch settling tank, we shall soon find we have three layers. On the top, a clear layer, which we call the light phase. In between, a narrow layer of still unseparated feed material, which is known as the neutral zone. And on the bottom, the heavy phase. If the mixture is left standing long enough, the neutral zone will disappear, and in its place a diffused belt will be formed, known as the interphase. Just as in the case of solids, this process can be made continuous by providing the tank with one inlet and one outlet. But here we must have two outlets. Then, in order to keep the system properly balanced and the level constant, some sort of counter-pressure must be applied to the lower outlet. By applying pressure in this way, it means we can keep the neutral zone at the level we want, which is what we call the balance column principle. What we have to do now is make the tank more practical at the outlets and the inlet. Let's have another look at it. The feed material is fed continuously through the inlet passage, after which it passes under the first baffle and on into the tank, where it forms a neutral zone. The light phase then rises to the top outlet, the heavy phase sinks towards the bottom and is discharged through the lower outlet. So far, so good. But now for a small refinement. 
To make the tank adjustable for different emissible liquids, we can provide the lower outlet with a so-called dam. This dam serves a very useful purpose. If it's set low, the position of the neutral zone becomes low too, which means that there'll be a risk of some of the light phase escaping along with the heavy phase. But at least the bulk of the light phase will be discharged through the upper outlet. And if we set the dam high, we obtain precisely the opposite result. Let's see what all this looks like when we express it mathematically. Let's call the settling velocity V. And the density of a particle or globule of heavy liquid, S. The density of the lighter liquid, S1. The diameter of the particle, D. The viscosity of the lighter liquid, mu, and of course the gravity acceleration, g. Then we can go ahead and write the formula. <coughs> now this is all very well, but what can be done to speed up the settling process? Can we do anything about the size of the particles? A little perhaps, but not very much. How about altering the densities? Unalterable, I'm afraid. Vary the viscosity. That is possible. If we heat a volume of heavy, viscous oil, it becomes a thin, runny fluid. And what about this? Sorry, you can't change that. But if you replace G, the force of gravity, by centrifugal force, there's hardly any limit to what can be done. This is what Stokes's law means. By replacing gravitational force by centrifugal force, generated by mechanical means, the constant factor G can be multiplied many thousands of times. Suppose we take a balanced tank and rearrange the component parts so as to permit a rotation. There we are. Now then, faster and faster and faster, the centrifugal force becomes greater and greater. Now let's see what happens inside the rotor of the so-called bowl during the separation process. And how the liquids behave during a continuous separation process. We can see here that some of the light globules are escaping along with the heavier liquid but that the bulk of the light liquid itself is absolutely clean. In order to capture these errant light particles, we use another discharge ring. This ring serves the same purpose as the dam in the balanced column tank. In other words, it keeps the neutral zone just where we want it. Now what happened when we increased the rate of the feed? It meant there was not enough time for separation to take place, didn't it? But let's take another look at our thin strata principle. We take a number of discs and put them in the bowl. There we are. But this answer is still not quite good enough, because the particles passing along the channels close to the centre are only subjected to a small centrifugal force. The channels around the periphery are much more efficient. What can we do? Obviously, we should try to make all the channels equally effective. Well, here's one thing. We can turn the cylindrical trays into conical discs. And then alter the shape of the bowl to conform with the shape of these discs. A simple little idea, but important. Um.
Of each run, the cover is removed and the accumulated solids scraped out of the bowl. This is the basic type, and it's used for liquids containing a low percentage of solids up to 1%. The bowl may also be made solid ejected. The separated solid particles accumulate in the sludge space of the bowl to be ejected at intervals by centrifugal force when discharge outlets are opened around the periphery. Separators of this type are useful for liquids containing up to 6% sludge. In the nozzle separator, the separated particles continuously escape through nozzles around the bowl's periphery. These particles, for example the concentrate, may be recycled for further concentration. They often constitute valuable products worth utilizing. The sludge content of the feed may be up to 25%. A decanter can handle liquids containing as much as 40% sludge. The separated particles are discharged by a screw conveyor that is built into the rotor. Because of its capacity for dewatering liquids that are rich in sludge, the decanter offers a most useful tool for treating products that are to be dried subsequently. This then is the state of affairs today for centrifugal separators. But research and development continue. We are constantly discovering new fields where conventional methods and processes could be substantially improved, speeded up and made more economical by the use of centrifugal separating machines. As their inventor, Gustave de Laval said, speed